Okay. So we have discussed the re combustion reaction that there are two kinds of combustion. When there is an excess and plenty of oxygen or air, the complete combustion occur. And when there is an incomplete oxygen or incom or uh, limited oxygen over there, or in it's in uh, happening inside the car engine, then it occur. It is incomplete combustion. Incomplete combustion, we get carbon dioxide and water. And in incomplete combustion, we get carbon monoxide and water. And sometimes black suits are observed. And if there are black suits. If examiner mentioned it, then it means solid carbon has been formed. Now have a look at these equations. How we will make the equation? Let me show you. So in all of these reactions, they are reacting with oxygen, right? Okay, so if C, this one is the one which is a complete combustion and in complete combustion, they didn't mention any, you know, condition. If it's not mentioned anything, then it's a complete combustion. So as we know that if it's a complete combustion, so we'll make one product carbon dioxide and the other product water. Now, you have to balance the equation. So if you see over here, there are one car, there is one carbon and there is one carbon over here as well, right? There are four hydrogens and how many hydrogens here we have? Two. two. So to balance the equation, we will put two over here. Now hydrogen becomes four. Hydrogen are four over here. The equation is balanced. But if you see how many oxygens we have? Two. And how many oxygens we have over here? Four. four. So to balance the oxygen, we are going to put two over here. The equation is balanced. Is this understandable? Now in the same way, if we do for this, as we know that it's again, you know, uh, complete combustion. So if it's a complete combustion, so we have carbon dioxide and water over here, but now we have to balance the equation. We have a eight carbon over here and there is a one carbon. So I'm going to put a eight over here to balance the carbon. Now, if you see how many hydrogens here we have? 18. And how many hydrogens we have? Two. So to make the two hydrogens 18, we have to put a nine over here. Now, hydrogens are balanced. Carbon is balanced. How many oxygen we have over here? Twenty five hydro oxygens, right? Sixteen oxygens over here and nine over here, which makes a sum of twenty five. So if there are two oxygen over here, so if I put a twenty five over here, it makes it fifty. So if I put a twenty five over two, then it makes it twenty five only because when this two multiply with it, these two are going to cancel out and we are left with the twenty five. So I am going to put a twenty five over two over here to balance this equation. Is this clear? Yes, Manahil, Aisha, and Saad. Now, here, this one is an incomplete combustion. I didn't mention over here something, but sometimes over here it's mentioned like limited oxygen. So if limited oxygen is written, or for example, it is written inside car engine, or limited air is written, then all of these conditions leads to incomplete combustion and in incomplete combustion uh, we get carbon monoxide and water so in all of these cases the products will be carbon monoxide and water is this understandable to all of you Now we have to balance the equation. Okay, I've repeated it twice because if, for example, if the examiner, let's say black suits are there. So with these two over here, you are going to make a solid carbon as well. And 
we make on solid carbon over here as well here only when the examiner asks you that there are black suits as well if not then it's do not need to write carbon then you have to just keep carbon monoxide and water is this clear for example if examiner asks you to write the equation for the combustion and they said that it's an incomplete combustion or they said that there is a limited supply of oxygen so what products you are going to make only carbon monoxide and water but for example along with that if examiner adds black suits are also observed then with these two you have to mention you have to write a carbon as well i am saying if the examiner specifically write about this condition then you will write okay now is it clear so that's why i have repeated it twice to show if the examiner says car black suits then you will mention this otherwise there is no need okay so if i balance the first one i have to put a three over here and there are eight hydrogen so i have to put a four over here right after this Uh, how many oxygens are on the right side now? Seven. Seven. So good. I'm going to put a seven over two over there here to balance it. Now in the next one, I have to put four over here and five over here. Now how many oxygens we got on the right side? Nine. Nine. So I'm going to put a nine over two over here to balance those nine oxygens. Is this clear? Now in the next one, we have a two oxygens on the right side and four oxygens on the left side. So to balance them, I'm going to put three over here. So three oxygens forming carbon, mono, three carbon, sorry, three carbons, the carbons, I'm talking about carbons, that four carbons are on the left side and there are Two carbons on the right side. So I'll put a three with carbon monoxide and one is over here. The carbons are balanced. There are 10 hydrogens. So I'm going to put five over here. Now, how many oxygens we have on the right side? Hmm? Count. Eight. Five are over here and three are over here. Eight. So for eight oxygens, we are going to put, sorry, four over here. Is this understandable to all of you? Okay. Now, let's proceed further. The next reaction is a substitution reaction. And in substitution reaction, substitution means that, see the word itself explains what is type of reaction it is. It's saying substitution. What is substitution? Displacement, replacement. So in this reaction, one of the hydrogen of an alkene is displaced by another atom. And usually it happens when we react the hydrocarbons, the alkenes with the halogens, group seven elements like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So what will happen? The atom of the fluorine, chlorine, bromine or iodine uh, displaces one of the hydrogen. And the specific conditions uh, that are needed for these reactions are UV light or sunlight. If UV light or sunlight are there, then uh, this reaction can occur. And because these uh, in the energy from the UV light or sunlight provides the activation energy for the reaction. And that's why we call it a photochemical reaction because the chemical reaction occurs in the presence of a light. That's why these are called photochemical reactions. So alkenes, when we talk about alkenes, alkenes are generally most unreactive compounds among all the hydrocarbons, among all the organic compounds. So they do undergo only three kinds of a reaction. One is a cracking that we have discussed in the last class, a breaking of a larger, larger or long chain molecules into a smaller chains, then combustion. And the third one is substitution. So see how many hydrogen we have here? Four. And there are how many chlorines? In each reaction, in each step, one hydrogen displaces, is displaced by one chlorine. So out of these two chlorine, one chlorine displaces the hydrogen. So see, instead of CH4 turns into CH3Cl, 
So the one hydrogen which is removed from the methane reacts with the other chlorine atom from the molecule forming HCl. And this is the structured equation. Understandable? Okay, do this quickly. Then we'll proceed further. Do it quickly, everyone. Are you guys done? We did I have shared this file? Yeah, in the past paper group, I have shared the whole syllabus, the whole notes. Okay. So I think it's better to proceed further. You guys can do it. So see, now, in the first step, if you see, the product formed is a chloroalkane or chloromethane specifically. Uh, because one chlorine substituted the hydrogen. Now this continues to react with another halogen molecule, another chlorine molecule. So see, out of these three, another chlorine, another hydrogen is displaced by another chlorine. So we got CH2Cl2. This is called dichloromethane. And the hydrogen which get out of from this molecule reacts with the other chlorine atom from this molecule to form HCl. And we get, we get dichloromethane. Is this understandable? Now, after this, this dichloromethane, which have a two chlorine and two hydrogen, reacts with another chlorine molecule. And as a result, a third hydrogen gets substituted. And now we have a three chlorines with the bonded to a carbon. So it is called trichloromethane. And its other name is chloroform. So chloroform is used as a local anesthesia in the hospitals for the during the operations. And then this one, it has a still one hydrogen, right? So it will continue to react with another chlorine molecule. And see, as a result, all of the hydrogen gets substituted and we get tetrachloromethane, which is used as a solvent. Is this clear? Now, same happens when, with other alkenes as well. For example, if you look over here, if you are reacting this compound with the chlorine, so see it has how many hydrogens? Three. So one of the hydrogen gets substituted. If you see the, the hydrogen is there and when we are reacting with the chlorine, this hydrogen gets substituted with the chlorine and the hydrogen is it comes out from the molecule, reacts with the other chlorine atom to form HCl. So if in case this would be the equation and you have to write these two. And if some student do this, that instead of removing this hydrogen from here, a student removed the hydrogen from here, then it is also correct because they didn't specify which hydrogen is going to be substituted. Okay. Is this clear to all of you?
okay now next we have alkenes what are alkenes alkenes are the car organic compounds which have a or, or hydrocarbon which have a carbon carbon double bond they have a general formula of cnh2 and due to this double bond they are also called unsaturated hydrocarbons till here is this clear to all of you okay alkenes how they are prepared which we have discussed in alkene that they are prepared from yes they are prepared by cracking okay the double bond between two carbon atoms that double bond makes them more reactive than alkenes and due to this double bond they can undergo addition reaction and other groups can be added to the alkenes because right now if you see this one for example now look at this carbon with how many groups it is bonded yes yes hmm? three groups right and if a carbon has bonds like this then how many with how many so see it have a still space for one group to be added in it so that's why it is called unsaturated and when it reacts and as a result of that reaction if this carbon got all four single bonds then that reaction is called addition reaction because something is being added and nothing is substituted from it and when one atom gets substituted and the other gets place of it that is called substitution that's what we have just discussed in alkenes so this is the test that usually examiner asks uh, the distinguishing test between alkenes and alkenes which is that alkenes are saturated or al and alkenes are unsaturated the distinguishing test between saturated and unsaturated compounds so for that we use bromine water okay so when we use bromine water when we mix up bromine water if we got this observation that the orange color turns colorless or the bromine decolorizes it means that the compound is alkene or it has a carbon carbon double bond in it and if there is a no change the brown the orange color of the aqueous bromine stays it doesn't decolorizes then it means that there is a no carbon carbon double bond is this understandable to all of you Now we have a chemical reactions. So they undergo three kinds of chemical reactions. One is combustion, second one is addition, and third one is polymerization. Combustion is same as alkene. It means that they react with the oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. And if they are incomplete, then they will form carbon monoxide and water. Remember, combustion is an exothermic reaction, so it always provides energy. But the only difference is the uh, is the com is between the combustion of alkene and alkene is that alkene when alkene undergo combustion they will provide relatively lesser energy because they have a lesser hydrogen in them okay polymerization we are going to discuss this reaction when we were doing at the last topic that is the polymers now let's talk about addition reaction so there are three kinds of addition reaction one is hydrogenation Second one is halogenation or bromination. And third one is hydration. Hydration refers to the addition of water. Bromination refers to the addition of bromine. Halogenation refers to the uh, addition of any halogen like chlorine or bromine or iodine, etc. And hydrogenation refers to the addition of hydrogen. Is this clear? Okay. And today we have a class from eight to nine, right? The past paper session. It's 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 same time every day, Monday till Friday. Okay. Now see, this is what happens in the addition reaction. See the what? How can you identify the reaction is addition? See how many reactants are there? Yes. How many reactants are there? Two. two and how many products are there 
Yes, how many products are there? Only one, right? So that is addition. See, the two things are reacting and at the end we are getting only one thing. So there are two reactants which are on reaction forming only one product that is a re addition reaction. And see, we have evidence. See, there is a carbon-carbon double bond. What happens over here if you compare it? Instead of this carbon-carbon double bond, over here we get a single bond. And this small molecule is broken into two parts. One part goes with one carbon and the other part bonds with another carbon. So see, that's addition. Is this clear? Okay. Now, first is the addition of hydrogen. That's what we call hydrogenation. So here hydrogen is being added in alkene and it needs a higher temperature. We need to heat it. We have to maintain the higher temperature and further we need a nickel catalyst. Okay. It's not necessary that every time we need a nickel. Beside nickel, we uh, that platinum can also be used. Alkenes are formed. So what are the product? Obviously alkenes because what is being added over here? If there is a H2 molecule over here, so we are going to do hydrogens over there. So it is going to turn into an alkene. See, if you look at the equation, it's an alkene, right? A hydrogen is being added in it. Uh, we are providing a heat and a nickel in the presence of a nickel catalyst. So the reaction would occur. And see, the double bond turns into a single bond. And these two hydrogens, one hydrogen got bonded with one carbon and the other hydrogen got bonded with the other carbon, making it a ethane. Ethane turns into ethane on adding hydrogen. Is this understandable? Yes, if any one of you has any confusion, please ask. Yeah, and both the carbons which have a double bond earlier turns forms two single bonds. And the one mo the molecule which is being added is split into two parts. One part bonds with the one carbon and the other at part of the molecule bonds with the other carbon. Yeah, is this clear? Okay. So see over here, it's a propene. See, there is a double bond over here. That double bond turns into a single bond. How many hydrogens we have over here? Yes, how many hydrogens we have? One. And how many? Two. So see, where there is a one hydrogen, now that carbon has a two hydrogens. And the one carbon, the carbon which has a three, two hydrogens earlier, now got three hydrogens. So it's proof that addition took place. Same happens over here. Both the middle, the carbons in the center have a one, each have a one hydrogen. And when the reaction occur, occurs and the product formed, both those carbons have a two, two hydrogens. Two hydrogens each indicates that it's a addition. So see, propene turns into propane and butene turns into butane. Okay. Now we have an industrial application of this hydrogenation reaction. Okay. You guys have seen margarine and you have guys have seen vegetable oils. Both are edible, right? So basically, when we talk about edible oils, edible oils are a very long chain organic molecules, which we call fatty acids. And in these long chain, there are at multiple positions, there are carbon-carbon double bonds. So that is a part of the structure of a vegetable oil. So see, you are observing three double bonds over here. So it... I made an empty bonds on both sides. It means this, this is only a part. This is not the whole structure. So it, it is a very long. So that's why we are showing just a small part of it. It continues over here and it continues over here. So in the whole chain, there are multiple double bonds. So that is the structure of a vegetable oil. So when we add hydrogen in them and when we do the hydrogenation, so we heat it with the hydrogen gas in the presence of a nickel catalyst. So what will happen? All the double bonds turns into single bonds and every carbon which has only one hydrogen, now see, has two hydrogens, right? Now, the structure that this form is a margarine. The difference is, see, due to these double bonds, it have a relatively, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a status liquid at room temperature and when it turns into margarine, its state becomes solid at room temperature. So the other reason is that they have relatively lower boiling point. 
oh sorry lower melting point that's why it's liquid at room temperature and they got a higher boiling point so that's why they become solid at room temperature is this clear so see this is the industrial application of the hydrogenation of alkene now halogenation so here what we are going to do we are going to get add the halogens to an alkene this reaction occurs at room temperature no catalyst is needed no heating is required and alkene turns into reacts with halogen and turns into dihalo alkene so see we are reacting with the bromine there are double bond double bond turns into a single bond and bromine molecule split into two bromine atoms one bromine atom bonds with one carbon and the other bromine atom bonds with the other carbon is this understandable <laughs> now same happens if we do the reaction with the chlorine see here we have a propene and a chlorine so a double bond see the same thing will happen double bond turns into a single bond this carbon got one chlorine atom and this carbon got one chlorine atom see over here now if you see we have a butene these two carbons has a double bond and one hydrogen only so after the reaction they turns into a single bond and one bromine added to the one carbon and the other bromine atom added to the other carbon is this understandable yes if any one of you has any confusion please ask Now we have a hydration of alkenes, hydration, hydra, which means water. So here we add water, but water would be added in the form of steam. And if it's in steam, it means it's temperature, the temperature when the reaction is taking place, that temperature must be greater than 100 degrees Celsius because below 100 it's water and above 100 it becomes a steam. So usually alkenes reacts with water actually with the specifically with the steam at this temperature. Due to this temperature, we are not saying it water. We are saying it steam because it's in vapor form now. And the catalyst that we need for this reaction is, what is the name of this compound? It's the name. What is the name? Very good, sulfuric acid. So see, the temperature is very high and the hydrogen gas, uh, and so, so, sorry, only due to the high temperature, it is very difficult to perform this reaction in the college or a school labs. And what will form? Alcohol is formed. How? Water have a three atoms, right? So water, if you recall, usually splits into hydrogen and hydroxide ions. So same thing will happen. The double bond turns into a single bond. And out of these two carbons, one carbon get the hydrogen of the water and the other carbon bonds with the OH of the water. So see, OH is bonded to our organic compound, it becomes an alcohol. How many carbon it has? Two. So it's an ethene. So it is going to form ethanol. See how many carbons it has? Three. It's a propene, so it is going to form propanol. So again, see where the double bond is. That double bond turns into a single bond. One carbon gets the hydrogen and the other carbon gets the... <coughs> OH. Same happens in the nexus where we have a beauty, butene. So when the, this reaction occurs at 300 or 350 degrees Celsius with H2SO4 as a catalyst, a double bond simply forms a single bond and one carbon gets the hydrogen and the other carbon gets the OH group. So it's a butane to all because on a second carbon we have a OH. These namings we have did in the initial classes of the organic chemistry. Is this clear to all of you? Okay. Now we have an we have alcohols. Alcohols have a OH group bonded to a hydrocarbon. The general formula is CNH2N plus 2O or CNH2N plus 1OH. Organic compounds containing OH group, OH is called hydroxyl group, are called alcohols. The commonly used alcohol is ethanol. 
Eth means two carbons and O means there is a OH. So it's an alcohol. So the structure of or the displayed formula of ethanol is this. This is the structural formula and this is the molecular formula. The molecular formula can be written like this as well. Okay. Significance of this ethanol, it is used as a solvent in many reactions. It is used as a fuel as well and it is used as a drinking purpose as well. Okay. So remember, there are so many alcohols, methanol, ethanol, propanol, butanol, pentanol, hexanol, and there are so many others. But out of all these, only this one is used for drinking. All the others are toxic. How can we prepare ethanol? There are two methods for preparing ethanol or alcohols. One is the hydration of alkene that we have just discussing, that the addition of steam or water in alkene. So that's how we can prepare alcohols. And by this reaction, we can prepare any alcohol because it depends on which alkene we are using. If we are using propene, we get propanol. If we are using ethene, we get ethanol. If we are using methane, we meet. No, sorry, not methane. There is no methane. We, if we are using butene with water, we get butanol. See? And the other method is fermentation of glucose. The drawback of this method is that it produces only ethanol. Okay. So what we do in this fermentation process, we add, we mix the glucose solution with the yeast. And we have to maintain this temperature range because uh, that yeast is a microorganism. It has enzymes. So enzymes work best or works efficiently in this temperature range. And there is an absence of oxygen is required. And it is to make ethanol only. And if the excess, if the absence of oxygen is not there, then yeast respire aerobically means yeast respire in the presence of oxygen. So all the glucose turns into carbon dioxide only. So anaerobic respiration is required. It means the respiration of a, any uh, living organism in the absence of oxygen. Okay. So what yeast do? Yeast do. Yeast has an enzyme in it. And that enzyme in the yeast catalyzes this reaction. So see, this is the equation that examiner can ask. So you have to remember this equation that glucose turns into ethanol and carbon dioxide. There must be an enzyme from a yeast. And this is the temperature conditions. So when the reaction has finished, we get the mixture of ethanol and glucose. Why is it? Because after a certain amount of ethanol is formed, Heat, yeast stops working and as yeast stops working because yeast get denatured so the reaction stops. So we got the mixture of glucose and ethanol and if we have to separate the ethanol from this mixture we have to do the distillation. So that can be asked in paper 4 as well or in paper 2 that you need. No, it's simple because we have two things only. Not If there are more than two uh, things then we will do fractional distillation. Okay. So the 90% of ethanol in the whole world is produced through uh, glucose because glucose is a renewable resource. Till here, is this clear to all of you? Now, the last thing that we are left with, okay, we have a reaction of carbox uh, alcohols first. That is the preparation of alcohol. So alcohols undergo two types of reaction, combustion and oxidation. So combustion is same as we discussed in alkenes and alkenes that it's for producing the energy because combustion is an exothermic reaction. It always provides energy. And uh, when there is excess air, again, the complete combustion occur and we will get carbon dioxide and water along with the energy. So by this reaction, we can use alcohol as a fuel. They burn in the engine. They provide energy and the engine is used to run. But they usually provide lesser energy than alkanes. Okay. But further, there is a one advantage of them as well, that they also provide, produce lesser carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, to the environment as compared to alkanes. So they are relatively environment friendly as compared to alkanes or a petrol or a crude oil. Okay. Now oxidation. We can... Oxidize ethanol. 
So to oxidize ethanol, we use our oxidizing agent. We have discussed this oxidizing agent in redox as well, that it's acidified potassium magnate 7. And it can be written like this or like this because the magnate is the oxidizing agent specifically. So whether you put the positive ion along with it or not, both are the same thing, okay? So remember, instead of potassium magnate, we can use sodium magnate as well. Because basically the magnet is the one which, you know, uh, causes the oxidation to occur. Now, the other way is that the bacterial oxidation, and it's usually due in a vinegar production. We all use vinegar. So vinegar is an ethanoic acid, the two carbon containing a carboxylic acid. So whenever ethanol oxidizes, whether by the acidified potassium magnet or whether by the bacteria, in both cases, it turns into ethanoic acid. Okay, so see this is the equation, we will write ethanol, then we will write the atomic oxygen, that atomic oxygen shows that there is an oxidizing agent. So usually we don't write the oxidizing agent in the equation, instead we put it above the arrow and this oxygen over here shows that this oxygen is produced by this oxidizing agent. We have to heat it, on heating this C, it's a two carbon alcohol. You will write on the right side two carbon containing a carboxylic acid and water. So in the same way, if there is three carbon containing alcohol, over here you will write the three carbon containing carboxylic acid. It means you will write propanoic acid over here. If there we have a butanol, you will write butanoic acid. Okay. And as the reaction proceeds, as it's the oxidizing agent, so its color changes from purple to colorless because it oxidizes the alcohol. The name of the vector, bacteria is acetobacter, which is also used to oxidize ethanol into ethanoic acid. And remember, the ethanoic acid is the vinegar. Till here, is this clear to all of you? Okay. Now we are left with only two things. One is carboxylic acids. And the other one is... Uh, polymerization. So we are going to do carboxylic acid and polymerization in our next class. And we, I'm going to keep two classes, one on Saturday and one on Sunday, two online classes. And after that, we uh, will have a one class on coming Tuesday and, th and I think then we will finish by the syllabus. And by then we are also, this, we have also started the past papers. So that class is going to uh, happen every, uh, evening at 8 p.m. Okay. Okay. So see you everyone in the next class. Take care. Allah us.